Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Med Talk with Syed Raza. I am Dr. Syed Raza, a consultant cardiologist and physician in Bahrain. And tonight, I am joined by a very special guest who is a sleep specialist and manager at the American Gulf Sleep Diagnostic Center in Bahrain. And she is none other than Lisa Eller. Good evening, Lisa, and welcome to my show. Good evening, Dr. Raza. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Good. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to discuss tonight sleep apnea, which is a very common medical condition. It has direct and indirect health implications. It is very often underrecognized. It is often not diagnosed and sometimes also misdiagnosed. So going straight to Lisa, let me ask you, what exactly is sleep apnea? Well, Dr. Raza, sleep apnea is something common in a lot of patients and it is underdiagnosed. Um, this is um, when a patient is sleeping at night, um, their throat muscles start collapsing, um, which narrows their airway and they are not able to um, breathe. They stop breathing sometimes for a few seconds. Sometimes it could be up to a minute or longer. Um, and it, this decreases oxygen to the brain. Right. Okay. And I understand there are a few types of sleep apnea, right? Yes. Um, obstructive sleep apnea is where basically you're losing um, the throat muscles uh, are narrowed again, but you are not taking any air in nasal or mouth, but you're still having some thoracic and abdominal movement. Um, this would be the obstructive apnea. Um, central apnea is when you repeatedly stop breathing um, because your brain is not getting the signal that controls the muscles to say, hey, it's time to breathe. Um, so you ha can have both central and obstructive together. Um, and this is what we call mixed apnea. Um, uh, then we have complex apnea. Uh, complex is a sleeping disorder um, in which centrals are repeated and persistent um, and they emerge when obstructive apnea has been eliminated while using uh, positive airway pressure, which is um, the standard for sleep apnea. Okay. And may I ask, you know, what are some of the common health implications that are associated with sleep apnea? Um, that would be uh, hypertension, um, high blood pressure, the heart arrhythmia, and cognitive impairment would be the main. Okay, so these are the main health implications. Yeah. Yes. All right. And are there any indicators that will help you to diagnose? Not diagnose, oh, yeah. I would say you can pick up that this person may be having sleep apnea. Yeah, so a lot of times um, a patient will be snoring. Um, the spouse will notice that there um, is a decrease in the, their spouse breathing at night. Right. Um, there is uh, morning headaches. Um, we also notice that a lot of patients will have um, waking up feeling like they're gasping or choking for air. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you say, I believe uh, much is in the clinical diagnosis. But obviously, you need to confirm the diagnosis. And are there ways to confirm? Do you have some diagnostic procedure? Yes, we have um, a couple of different types of testing that we can do um, for the sleep apnea um, side of sleep disorders. And that would be a home test unit. Um, and a lot of times, not all patients qualify for that because of the fact of their medical history. Um, so say if you have a patient that is you know, obese or has a certain size neck or COPD, they most likely are gonna have some sleep apnea. So basically um, that would be a unit um, that we could use or if someone is bedridden. The best way to diagnose any kind of sleep disorder is we do an in-lab um, study. Um, that is a 32 channel and that is monitoring brainwave activity, uh, uh, chin movement, grinding, thoracic and abdominal breathing. So this is a long line of um, 32 channels. I mean, it's a really detailed study. So right. we're all, well, yes. Okay, and for this, the patient has to come to a diagnostic lab, is that correct? Yeah, 
Yes, what we do is we sit down with the patient, we discuss in the consult their sleeping pattern, what time they go to bed, what time they wake up, that sort of thing, and we stick to that patient's sleep schedule. We don't try to change that just so that they are feeling comfortable um, in our lab. Um, we have it set up like a, basically like a hotel room. So it's a comfortable room. It's not a hospital setting. Yes. Right. Okay. And say, for example, a patient has a disturbed sleep and he wakes up in the morning and say that, hey, I couldn't sleep well. So will that make the, the, the procedure, the diagnosis null and void? Um, not always. We try to get a good of four or five hours of recording on a patient. Sometimes we can, if a patient is severe enough, we can see that within the first hour or two. Um, in my lab, if a patient comes in and we don't get it the first round, I bring them back and we do it again at no charge. All right. Okay. At no charge. That's good. <laughs> at no charge. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, and the, let me ask you, Lisa, as to what are the, some of the common strategies to managing these uh, sleep apnea patients? Yes. Um, the first thing would be is the weight loss. Um, everyone needs to have a healthy lifestyle. They okay. need to understand that, you know, not smoking and drinking, you know, these things are going to help um, them, you know, to... Um, eliminate maybe some, not all, but some of the symptoms of having sleep apnea. But we would not know that for sure unless they did it in lab testing or home testing. Okay, so 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 most impart, important is the lifestyle changes. Yes. Uh, anything else uh, that can help them to sort of overcome this uh, disorder? Um, Weight loss would be the number one. I mean, if they can lose 15 to 20%, you know, we are suggesting that that most of the time will eliminate some of the apnea by uh, 50%. Okay. Now, there's something I've heard about this CPAP. So, so yes, please tell me a little bit about it. For treatment of sleep apnea, we the, the number one therapy and treatment for that is continuous positive airway pressure. That's the best therapy. Not all patients can do CPAP. We would sometimes, depending on their apnea, whether it be central or mixed or complex or obstructive, some patients need different types of therapy and that could lead to bi-level ST, ASV, um, you know, or uh, just straight BiPAP, you know. Um, right. So okay. those are the best therapies for apneas. All right. So CPAP, and just for the understanding of the general audience, if anybody is listening to this. Yes. So does that mean providing oxygen under pressure? Is that correct? Right. Um, basically, CPAP gives you refiltered uh, air, filtered air through the, uh, a machine. Okay. We all are breathing oxygen as we're breathing. Um, if a patient is still desatting once we've eliminated the apnea with the CPAP machine, um, we would then add additional oxygen. But most of the time, giving therapy with CPAP or bi-level um, therapy, that automatically splints that patient's airway and their oxygen level, level automatically um, raises. Okay, good. Now, as always said, uh, prevention is better than cure. Yes. So are there ways <laughs> to prevent uh, sleep apnea? To preventing it, um, uh, preventing it, we try again. The weight loss would probably be the best thing to do. Having the healthy lifestyle, um, it does not discriminate. Um, it does not matter how big you are, how small. But uh, you know, if you're trying to prevent it, just the healthy lifestyle, no smoking, no drinking, those sorts of things are the the best way to go about keeping yourself maybe from developing it. Okay, and you mentioned weight loss at some point. So how much weight loss will you advocate to the patients? If a patient can lose 15 to 20% of their weight um, loss, um, it reduces uh, signs and symptoms of apnea by 50%. Okay, so weight loss is an important measure. Yes, it's a very important measure, yes, okay. yes. Okay, yes. so... So difficult, but but uh, easy to say. I, I know it's a weight difficult loss, thing. You, 
Yeah, weight loss, you have to be willing to try, you know, to do it. And I always say your health is your number one priority in life, you know, and uh, if you don't start with a healthy lifestyle, then, you know, all the bad stuff follows. So, um, and that would be one of of sleep apnea could be very, uh, very dangerous of having and not treating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, uh, with that, uh, thank you very much, Eliza. It was lovely talking to you. I'm sure the mm-hmm. audience who are listening to this conversation, they will be yes. uh, very well uh, benefited. And I thank you once again and have a very good evening ahead. You're welcome. And again, if anyone, we're at American Golf Sleep. And if you want to reach out to us and have any additional questions, please give us a call. Um, we are on Instagram and um, WhatsApp and however we can help, we're there for your patients, always. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank Thank you you. and have a good evening.